Hello everyone, welcome to my The Way Home official channel. I hope everyone is having a great day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Cat and Alice return to the present at the pond, completely upset. Cat feels that her father's crash was her responsibility. Alice and Elliot comfort Cat. When Cat gets to Elliot's residence, he tells her not to take the blame for the mishap. She remembers how Colton finally acknowledged her and expressed his love for her. She feels bad about involving Alice in the past. Alice tells Cat that it wasn't her fault when they are at the laundry farm. Alice feels that Cat chose her over Colton and that it was her own fault. Alice is reassured by Cat that she was not at fault either and that they should have faith in Elliot's assertion that nothing can be changed in the past. Their marriage ends when Brady shows up and gives Cat the divorce papers. Brady informs Cat that he will be spending the remainder of his visit at a motel. Alice looks over the laundry almanac in her room, resolved to go back in time and assist teen Cat by going to Colton's burial. Cat is invited to accompany her. They hold hands at the pond and dive in. Teen Elliot is crying in the clubhouse Colton built in 2000. Alice meets Elliot, a teenager there. He remembers when he and Colton built it. Alice asks Elliot, the teenager, to grab her clothing. Although he is overburdened by her requests, he complies for teenage Cat. Alice and Cat, now adults, show up to Colton's burial. While adult Cat remains hidden in the back, Alice approaches to stand with the family. Dell notices an emotional grown-up cat hiding in the trees during the eulogy. Brady and Elliot first meet in 2023 at the Point Cafe. Brady admits to Elliot that he feels something for Cat and shares with him the details of their divorce settlement. He acknowledges that due of Elliot's intelligence and strong bond with Cat, he was once threatened by him. Dell saw Cat in the laundry kitchen, staring off into space. While reassuring Dell that she shouldn't cling to the notion that Colton was unfaithful, Cat admits to thinking about him. However, Dell informs Cat that she saw an unusual woman crying during his funeral. Cat apologizes to her and tells her it wasn't someone significant. Dell reaches into the kitchen drawer and takes out the card Cat gave her about the grief support group. Alice hears Colton's voice in her room, urging her to pursue her singing career. She questions Spencer about playing at the Roxy's opening night at the point. The news that she's gained thrills Spencer. Cat walks into Elliot's house. She informs him that her mother believes her father cheated because of her. She feels that she is the bad seed and regrets going back in time. Elliot encourages her once more to let go of the past because living his life under the dictates of the past wears him out. Cat says she'll let it go so she can concentrate on them. She expresses her gratitude to him. They give each other a kiss. Brady informs Cat in the laundry kitchen that Alice has agreed to play at the Roxy. Brady and Cat are both pleased with her. Brady wants to talk to Alice about the divorce, but Alice says she doesn't need to talk about it because she's okay. Alice says she wants to check on the teen Cat, despite Cat's attempts to console her in her room. After the funeral, Cat informs her that Alice never returned to Port Haven. Alice is curious as to why her mother held off on telling her. Being great friends with teen Cat, she wanted to bid her farewell. She walks off furiously. Alice walks to the pond, but when she comes out, the year 2000 is not where she is. Rather, she has merely traveled back a few months to the period before she and Cat came to Port Haven. She enters the laundry home covertly and overhears Dell conversing with Rita. Rita is making an effort to persuade Dell to forward the letter she sent to her grandchild and daughter. She assures Rita that she won't take that action. Rita supports her, saying she needs a family close by, but Dell says no and throws the letter away. Alice enters after they have left and takes the letter out of the garbage. After signing the divorce papers, Alice travels back in time to the present and runs with Cat in the laundry kitchen. Alice lets her mom know that she was correct. The pond didn't take me where I wanted to go, but it took me where I needed to go, she says. Brady cuts them off to tell them he loves them both and that he will be at Alice's concert. 
Alice is in the laundry barn, rehearsing her guitar. Del shows up and compliments Alice on her lovely singing. When Alice acknowledges that she is nervous about performing, Del gives her advice to do the thing that scares you. She wishes Colton could have listened to his granddaughter's performance. Kat approaches Elliot at the Roxy. She begs to hold his hand through Alice's performance since she Alice's is anxious performance about as they take their seats. To raucous cheers, Alice ascends the platform. She starts playing, then looks over to find her parents seated together. She announces to the audience that she wants to perform a new song, one that has helped her through a lot, after stopping the current song. Del knows that's the song that Colton made specifically for her. Tearfully, Del applauds, wondering how Alice could know the song. Kat notifies Elliot at his house that she has signed the divorce papers. She takes advantage of the chance to express to Elliot how much she values him. Weeping, he tells Kat that although she has always held a particular place in his heart, he wants to begin a new chapter and see where his own journey takes him. He's hoping she'll come to understand. Elliot tells her he needs her to try, but she doesn't. She is shocked by his choice, but she accepts it. Dell asks Alice in the laundry kitchen where she learned the tune she sang. She shares with her that she always remembers Kat singing it to her when she was younger. Dell informs them that she attended a grief support group. The individuals were friendly, but it wasn't her scene. Dell says he's sorry to Kat for not being there for her when she was so distraught. She informs them that Kat and Alice have served as her support system. They filled her heart since returning into her life. Although Kat expresses gratitude for Dell sending the letter, Dell maintains that she did not. Alice smiles, realizing that she was the one who sent the letter several months ago after discovering it in the garbage. Finn, the laundry dog, enters the room carrying a ripped baseball that he picked up from the pond. Del says that Finn is unable to stay out of the pond. Kat knows that the baseball was the same one that was owned by Jacob. Was Finn able to travel through time in the pond as well? When Kat dashes into the living room to retrieve the laundry almanac, she discovers a note next to a page that has been torn out with Jacob's handwritten initials. The explorer found a home, but he still looks to the stars when he feels lost. She remembers teenage Kat and Jacob laying next to each other, gazing up at his room's starry ceiling. Young Jacob responds, Did you know explorers use the stars to lead them home when they got lost? Kat looks in shock at the words. Kat is taken back to the night Jacob vanished, when she walked him home. He hears a dog barking at the front door, and it's Finn. He follows the dog across the meadows and into the pond, diving in after him. Alice cuts Kat off. She informs Alice Jacob that the night she saved Finn, Jacob followed him into the pond. Del overhears them talking and asks what they're talking about. Kat informs her that she is aware of Jacob's fate. In the meantime, in 1814, a white woman races through a forest while being pursued. The female gets to the pond. It's Cat, with her long white gown and grown-out short hair. She promises to return for Jacob before diving into the water. I swear. When Elliot was a teenager in 2000, he was crying inside the clubhouse that Colton had built with great care. It was a haven of memories, a place where secrets and laughter coexisted. And that's when Alice met the teenage Elliot amid the faded posters and wooden beams. With nostalgia for the days he spent working with Colton to build the clubhouse, Elliot's eyes glistened with memories. The sound of nails being driven home and the smell of freshly cut wood filled me again. Curious and stubborn, Alice came up to him. She had a request, one that was very important to her young self. She yelled, get my clothes, in a demanding yet vulnerable tone. Her tenacity overwhelmed Elliot, but he gave in. He would do everything for a teenage cat. A few years later, everything changed. When Cat and Alice reached Colton's burial, it was a solemn assembly of recollections and silent remarks. After growing up, Alice approached the family and stood with them, drawn forward by their shared history and genetic links. But adult Cat stayed in the background, keeping her anguish out of sight from curious onlookers. She stayed close to the trees, a silent watcher. 
Dell's eulogy, and homage to a man who had influenced their lives, hung in the air. And that's where grown-up Kat's tears came freely, among the sorrow. She had once loved Colton, and the pain of that love returned. Tucked down in the underbrush, she struggled with recollections of the past, the joy, the suffering, and the decisions that had taken them all in different directions. Dell's eyes found adult Cat in that silent moment, the wounds that still hadn't healed, the daughter she had lost. The trees watched as regret and love entwined. Cat's tears blended with the dirt as the wind rustled through the leaves, finding comfort in the historical roots. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.